I think one of the main advantages that we have as a team is our the drive to win. Like all of us equally want to win as bad as the other. So you don't really see that a lot in other Singaporean gamers. Like they are not really as driven as a professional gamer should be. And yeah, I think one of the main problems is also that Singaporean gamers like maybe I only have experience in CSGO, so I'm just saying this for the Counter-Strike few. Like, they, the Singaporean, Singaporean players give up too easily. Like, they can't really take losses. Like, normally after a few tournaments, if they lose the first tournament that they participate in, they just disband after that, and they just give up. But they need to learn that, yeah, as what Anthony said just now, they, people need to learn how to lose. You need to lose before you can win, because you have, you have to learn. So the whole thing is a learning journey and a process that one must take if you want to be successful at least. Yeah. Okay, so our our timing that we wake up and everything is all set. So um, the practice time and everything it's more you get you get more practice and like it's easier to fix mistakes and um like we have a, and we have a coach so everything is a lot easier for us if we have any problems we can fix it instantly um, that's that's why I, that's that's why i feel a gaming house is very good that's why i feel a gaming house is very good for everybody in uh, to have i can't answer it properly <laughs> can you just answer first just answer first i'll answer the back ones. i'll continue i'll continue yeah. uh, and one of the advantages is cost also like cost cost Nowadays, if you go to a LAN cafe like we used to do back then, it used to be like really expensive. It was like something crazy like $20 per hour. And we would train like maybe 6 hours at a LAN sometimes. So getting a house here really cut down on our costs. And it increases productivity for us also. Because it's a lot easier to learn with each other when we can actually see what we are like talking about. We can literally explain it to the person right next to you compared to if you're online and you can you can try to explain it across like TeamSpeak, Skype and such but you won't really get the message across as clearly as you can in person. Yeah, so I think that's one of the main advantages of a gaming house. The disadvantages of a gaming house is you have to actually make a lot of sacrifices when you come here. There's a lot of commitment there's a lot of commitment that has to go into this gaming house. Like you have to know that you are sacrificing a lot of your social life to into this house, into like working towards your passion, which for all of us is playing games. And I think it's a good trade-off actually, because not a lot of people get to play games as a living. And I think it's a good start for us. But the advantages definitely outweigh the disadvantages, in my opinion. Yeah. For me, it's on like a fixed schedule. It's like just following the plan, like for example, going to school at waking up at six, and then going to school like I'll reach school at like eight, and then school finishes at like four p.m. in the afternoon, and then I'll come back straight. After that, we'll get like one hour break, like before practice, and then we start practicing until like maybe eleven thirty, latest maybe twelve thirty, and then I'll probably sleep until like six. So it's okay for me. I think NIP would obviously be one of my top choices because like they were the team that everybody looked up to like when we started when everyone first started playing CS. So yeah I think they are, even though like the main the main core is still there but the original five isn't really anymore. I think it still will be a fun thing to like just play against like the all time greats. Yeah. Uh, to me, it would be fun to play against G2, I think, because I really like the way Shoxi plays, and um, I think they are well-rounded, even though they, they've lost they recently, but I still, I still think they are one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, so obviously joy when we won, because all of our efforts paid off. And so it's a good feeling when you work, for, when you work hard for something and it pays off. Um, other thoughts was like, Actually, it was mostly just joy, like I could 
yeah, that was <laughs> all I was feeling at that time, just happiness and stuff. And we were just celebrating with our team. And yeah, after that, I started worrying about the preparation that we needed to do heading into the event. But we have about, as of right now, we have about one week, no, not one week, sorry, one month, one month and two weeks, give or take. So yeah, I think that's still sufficient time for us to prepare. Yeah. Um, the first thing that came into my mind was, I could have done, honestly, this is why I feel uh, I could have done better to make it easier for my team, you know, like, because my role is quite important. Like, I feel if I landed more shots, I might have, we might have won a lot easier on T side. So, but, if, that, but no matter what, it's still, it's still a win and, and I'm very happy that we won. Mm, honestly, yeah. Many is my name, like Tommy. Like I, I've been called Tommy ever since I was young by my mom because I really like power. Uh, can I say this? It's good. It's gonna be like, I feel like I'm childish, you know, because it's literally, okay. So basically, I got I got this name from like watching Power Rangers when I was a kid, like you know the Green Ranger Tommy. Yeah, I got I I got it from there and start. My parents started calling me Tommy, so I just kept it from from when I was young until now, like I just put in my in-game na nick nickname and everything. Yep. So for me, it's actually not, because normally people have like inspiring stories behind their <laughs> nicks, right? Mine is just like really normal, there wasn't really a lot of thought put into it, even though when like, when you hear it, right, when I say Bankai, right, you straight away think of like the anime, you know, like Bankai and stuff, but actually it wasn't really, it wasn't really well thought, I would say, but it was one day like I was just asking everyone in the team, hey, what should I call myself? Because last time my nickname was just like MHMM, so it's like mm-hmm. So it's like really like a very simple term name. And so I think one of my I think Nevin like especially like he just considered bank LA. Uh he said he considered Bankai. And after that I just replaced the ban with like a my name like Ben. So that just stuck on after that. Yeah. So Tommy doesn't BM at all, which is not no fun at all. <laughs> Cause um yeah, he's a very polite person in in game towards his friends. Towards like other random people he's not really very polite. But um for me personally there's a lot of ways that I can BM someone. You can spray them with like the graffiti stickers in CS, you can if they're opping, you can wait for them to crouch, you can jump on their head and see because if you jump on their head like they can't really stand up. So they're just like squat, squatting around. So you can always teabag them. It's very classic teabagging. Uh, you can spray their bodies with 30 bullets or maybe your whole clip after you're done. Uh, you can knife them always. Knife is always... Actually, knifing is not really considered BM, I think, because you can get like, you can get a lot of money when you knife someone in CS. So it's, I think it's knifing is an economical decision. It's not BM. Uh, other BMs, you can just run circles around an opper, with, or, or if you know that the pro player has low sense, like I know in another team, there's a, in another Asian team, there's this guy with like insanely low sense, like if, you, if he swipes his mouse one time, it's like 45 degrees, so I tend to just run circles around him and just watch him keep swiping his mouse. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's most of the ways that I BM someone. It's it's always me. Like I feel like um, like whenever we like I, whenever I do something stupid, it's like instantly get getting caught by everybody. Like everybody knows like it's me, you know. Or because I do a lot of funny, a lot I do a lot of stupid shit. Like and I like to scream whenever something is happening, you know. So the main person is just me. I feel. For me, it's mainly Nevin or Tommy. <laughs> Tommy is like. It's not really about his mistakes. I think in the team, it's just like the punching bag. Like everyone just like throws, throws insults at him and he just like sponges it up. And it's fine. Because <laughs> he can take it and he's like a full grown adult. But for Nevin's case, um, normally he just does like really dumb stuff in game. Like sometimes he does stuff that he doesn't really think about, which costs us a few rounds and sometimes even a game. So, 
but we don't really t- like make it we don't really make him take it too hard and for Tommy Tommy knows that it's all in good fun so it doesn't really affect him but maybe Nevin is another case yeah huh? be honest I really don't know eh. you fucking keep everything I really don't know for now you just say who you always pick just say Tommy is it? yeah you eat too much maybe all of us say, all of us say Tommy everybody said Tommy even he, he himself said Tommy I didn't say I point at me yeah which is the same bro <laughs> <laughs>